there's an element of self-reliance um, in in ownership and not in the I can go it alone. You know, I own it and I, you know, I do everything and I get all the you know, all the credit and I don't need help, but more in in the sense of you know realizing how connected we are to everything. This is the Own It Show, where we tell stories of how everyday people made ownership theirs. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Own It Show. I'm your host, Justin Rolfing, chauffeur. And I don't know where you're listening today. You could be driving. You could be working out. You could be walking. You could be going up a mountain. Hopefully, you have Wi-Fi service or you've downloaded this previous because it's going to cut out on you. But if you're new here, welcome to the Own It Show. We dive in. We talk about sto- uh, talk about people and tell stories of their journey to ownership. And ownership can be a confusing thing, something that kind of um, feels daunting at times and feels uh, overwhelming. And it, it can kind of have like a dark energy to it if you if you kind of take it from this way. If you want to shy away from it, you don't want to be around it. But at the end of the day, ownership is what creates freedom. And it's actually very empowering. It's very safe. And it's very, very worthwhile looking for. And so... If you're new here, be sure to go take a look at the past 250 episodes that we've done because I'm sure there's going to be something that speaks to you. And I know that our guest today is going to be able to do that as well. So if this episode speaks to you, leave a review, share it, and be sure to reach out with any questions that we can do to help you with. If you followed along the last couple episodes, our guests have just been bringing the heat. And we've been talking a lot about... Uh, the themes that have just kind of come about uh, without any type of planning uh, is really understanding where you are today. And we can know where we want to go. We can have a plan. We can have a vision. Uh, we can uh, do up um, uh, a vision board or whatever it is that we're trying to do. But if we don't know where we are today, there's no way that we can map out our steps to get there. And that's sometimes why people feel lost, why we can kind of be in this place. And somebody who's been able to not only know exactly where he is, but ultimately help understanding where other people are and get their message out and create a system to help grow their God-given purpose and their mission is here with us today. So without further ado, uh, John Jantz, it's a pleasure to have you on the Own It Show. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Oh, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. So, John, knowing kind of your background and the the impact that you've done in the business, like really just groundbreaking how you show up and how you do marketing for people is, for lack of a better word, it's just different. And I love that concept. Like for us, own your different is really our tagline. And being different is what creates change. Being different is what uh, empowers you to go that route. And I'd love for you to share with our listeners a little bit about why this has been your mission, why this is your calling, because I know you got there by accident. I know it wasn't something you planned. It wasn't something that this is what I want to do. But take me through that journey a little bit. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned by accident because I say that all the time. Um, really, I mean, I, I've owned my own business for thirty years, but so I got to take you back to right before there. Trust me, it won't. This won't take forever to, to get to where we're going. But uh, I went to, right out of once upon a time. I was born. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was a Tuesday in October. So I, uh, I right out of college, really, I went to work for an ad agency. Did that for about five years, and I thought, well, you know, any dummy can run a business. I just jumped out with no plan. I knew I could hustle work. Uh, my dad was a, you know, a door to door, not, you know, old school salesperson. And I'd seen that, you know, what that took and that, you know, how to hustle. And so I knew I could do that. Um, and I got big projects, little projects, big clients, little clients. So like I said, no plan, just, just hustled work. But I got three or four small business owners as clients. And uh, first off, they were really hard and frustrating to serve because they had the same needs and challenges, never the same budget not even the same attention span. <laughs> and, and I, but, but I connected with them so deeply. Um, it was, there's something, you know, I think there's something equal parts uh, gratifying and terrifying about asking for, you know, money f- for work that you do from the person who's he's, they're going to actually write the check too. Right. I mean, it's, it's not like some big corporate office that's going to go off somewhere. And right. so I just really got charged with, with serving them, but I also saw I could have great impact. I mean, I could make a difference, um, you know, really quickly. Um, and that got me very charged as well, but I was, it was just 
terribly frustrating to figure out how to work with them. So I literally one day just said, look, I'm going to walk into the next person that I talk to. And I'm going to say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to do. Here are the results we hope to get. And here's what it's going to cost. Do you want it or not? Um, and after about the third client who said, you know, where have you been all my life? <laughs> I, I was like, maybe I'm onto something. Because what, what I really tapped into was in trying to solve my great frustration, I, I tapped into what is, I think, still today, one of the greatest frustrations with most small business, mid-sized business owners. And that is, it is really hard and getting harder to buy marketing services. Mm. You know, everybody is selling a piece of the puzzle. Everybody's selling the tactic of the week. Everybody says, you got to go this way and then that way, and you got to do it all. Um, and, and so the fact that somebody would walk in and say, look, we're going to start with strategy before tactics. Uh, we are going to install a marketing system and you're going to know what it costs. I mean, that was that was a giant breakthrough that I didn't realize <laughs> the world was waiting for, uh, but it's become my life's work. I love that. And you said something that really stuck out to me heavily is that people are buying pieces to the puzzle and not the entire thing. And they're buying pieces of the puzzle um, without the instructions. They're buying pieces, <laughs> pieces to the puzzle, not knowing what the end result should actually look like. They're buying pieces to the puzzle that don't actually have the puzzle pieces to all fit together. And yeah. no wonder we're frustrated. No wonder we're overwhelmed. And to be quite honest with you, John, I don't think this is just a marketing issue. This is a life issue yeah, it is. where <laughs> it's it's in your health, it's in your relationships, it's in your, uh, your family, it's in your finances, it's in your business, it's everywhere yeah. because there's always a shiny object. There's always, like you said, the tactic of the week that you're leaning into. And so and I think really, and I think particularly for entrepreneurs, because, you know, there is no separation of, you know, personal and business <laughs> anymore. Right. So I think it makes it even worse. It, that's such a great point, because um, even in a in any type of relationship or every, any type of um, in, engagement, whether both spouses are entrepreneurs or whether just one is by default, the other one has to be an entrepreneur yeah. because you have to put up with that person. You have to put up yeah. with the schedule. And so um, we know being in this space, being in kind of um, in this realm that it's not a nine to five job. It's not something you put at five o'clock, you clock out, you put the, put the computer away and away you go. Yeah. There are boundaries that have to be kept in place and kind of looked at, but it's going to take much more than that to get to where you want to go quite often. And so um, I, I love that. When you talk about not buying the whole thing and only getting puzzle pieces, how have you been able to rectify that? Or how have you been able to then give the whole puzzle in a box, nicely, tightly wrapped with a, with a bow? Yeah, our biggest thing is, and and it took us a while to get there, but we are dead, dead set flag in the sand about this now. If somebody comes to us and says, oh, I need a website. Um, we say, yes, you do. I need a website, but we are going to start with strategy first. And we have a, a productized approach that we have now done thousands of times with small business owners to help them understand what their brand promise should be, to help them understand the value they really do bring to their clients, to understand the specific problem that they actually solve. And it has nothing to do with what they sell. Um, and, and you know, running people through that process uh, does a couple things. It it takes away all the shiny objects because we become a trusted advisor. I mean, nobody has asked them the questions that we're asking them. You know, nobody has directed them in the way and shown them what the whole roadmap looks like. Um, and so, you know, that, you know, when we got very, very firm about the only way to work with us is to go through strategy first, um, we started attracting uh, what I call investors, uh, people that want to invest in their business and not just, uh, you know, make the phone ring tomorrow, uh, that they understand that this is that, that marketing is not an event. It is it never ends. <laughs> um, it is, you know, it's a process. It's a system uh, that that really puts you on a track. Uh, to go from stage to stage. And, and you know, that uh, that change in our business or, or when we got really firm about that aspect of our business and stopped selling websites, campaigns, you know, whatever somebody thought they needed, um, we started delivering tremendous value to the market, but we also um, significantly shifted the, the revenue and growth and profit picture of our own business. 
I love that. And again, a couple of things, listeners, if you guys aren't like, if you have a notepad, like these are two or three things that just stick out to me that um, makes so much sense. Sell to investors, like people who are willing to invest in themselves. And, and again, I don't care if you don't have a small business. I don't care if this isn't something that's pertinent to you in a marketing play, like listen to the wording and how this can come. sell to investors. Go to people, be around people who want to invest in themselves, people who want to better themselves, people who want to level up in all categories, anywhere. That's not just a thing of how to come into duct tape marketing with John. This is this is something bigger. This is a this is a life skill. Same same thing with marketing isn't an event. It's something that goes on forever. You're not, it's not just one thing that you have to go, oh, thank goodness we got four or five people through the door. No. Let's build relationships. Let's get people to know what you're doing. Let's get people to know you. And when you can create that, man, life becomes simple. And as we kind of keep going down this road, John, I'd love to kind of understand how a lot of these like principles, yes, you use them to operate your business. Yes, you use them to go really well here. But but how have they manifested into your life? How have they manifested into your relationships um, and, and just the way you live day to day? Probably the biggest thing is, you know, what a clear strategy does um, is, you know, business owners, there's always more to do than you can do. Everybody's telling you you need to be on every platform. You know, what a clear strategy does is actually uh, shows you what you don't need to do. Um, and to me, in some cases, that's actually far more freeing than just having a list of stuff I have to do. So that that idea itself has probably come into, you know, how we plan, how I prioritize the quarter, how I prioritize what we're going to do in a year, what's important and what's not important. I mean, so, you know, you start, you start throwing out those concepts and um, you, you really start to pin down that the only thing that's important is your time. Mm. Um, and that, you know, you only, that's the only thing you can't control or, you know, make more of. <laughs> um, and so, you know, for us, um, you know, a, a lot of what this strategy uh, selling does to us is it raises us to the trusted advisor level, which then actually gives us the ability to to make a margin on what it is that we are selling uh, that is commensurate with the value we're delivering rather than competing on price, you know, with other people in the market. Um, and that allows us to actually then bring in people and pay them well and and scale, you know, our business and our clients' businesses, not sideways, like so many people do, but, but you know, uh, up as you're supposed to do. Because I think, you know, one of the real traps for a lot of businesses, a lot of business owners is, you know, as they grow, they just get busier. Um, and they, you know, they feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I got to bring in people, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, I got 15 headcount now, I got 20 headcount now, you know, but they're not making any more money <laughs> than they were. Uh, because they, you know, they, they're going kind of the traditional path of, oh, X, we got X amount of clients, we need to get X amount of people to serve those clients, or now we're, you know, now we're ready for a leadership team. And so they just, you know, continue to grow that way rather than really prioritizing you know where they can where they can make significant difference and I'll, I'll tell you the place where you make significant difference is figure out who you can deliver the most value to the fastest um and you know that's the place that you ought to be spending your time I want to go back to something you said where like traditional growth of um adding team members and kind of bringing people in just so oh, this is this is where we have to do it versus uh doing it a different way elaborate on that a little bit more because I'm I, I I personally am interested yeah so a lot of it has to do with and, and I'm you know I do not claim um a lot of I've created a lot of IP um, what I'm about to share with you is not mine. <laughs> um, and and uh, there's a you know brilliant, brilliant business owner you may know him or your listeners may know him. Dan Martell has uh, you know, created numerous businesses, and he has for a long time been talking about this idea of buying back your time. Oh yeah, and he's that, uh, <laughs> he's a past guest, past guest okay, on the Onet show. Perfect. Um, Dan just hit the New York Times bestseller list for buy back your time. So yeah. if uh, listeners, I'll put that down in the. Um, uh, in the, uh, chat box on, um, on the show notes for you. So you can go to that and get that on Amazon. But, uh, yes, I've got the book. It's literally sitting over there. And, um, so, so he really, in the book, he really crystallized something I'd been doing without naming, you know, for a long time. And that was the idea of, you know, <clears throat> 
creating a package, creating a repeatable system that allowed you to then uh, delegate or you know assign work to you know people who really could just operate a system. Uh, they didn't have to be brilliant strategists or have years of experience. They could operate a system, and consequently, there are a lot more people uh, who can do that <laughs> than uh, there are people that can create strategy. And so, consequently, it allows you to scale. Uh, and and fulfill a whole lot more work for a lot less money, or another way of saying that for a much higher margin <laughs> um, in the end. And, and so this idea of creating a compelling package, which is what we've done, um, which allows us to charge you know, a margin that allows us to go out and get people <laughs> and train those people to do the work um, so that we can scale, you know, upwardly instead of uh, you know, just getting more people and getting you know wider and fatter. I love it. I love it. When uh, something you said even before, time is the asset. And uh, listeners, you guys have heard me talk about this numerous times where time is your most valuable, precious asset. Health is the ultimate form of wealth. And uh, we often don't think about our health until it impacts our asset yeah. and uh, until it starts to hold us back from a sick day not being able to go into work or even worse, a chronic illness that holds us out or an energy loss that we can't be as productive as we were before. Um, what have you been able to do, John, to be able to stay productive, be able to focus on you, be able to put you yeah. first and and really be able to operate at a high level for so long? Well, I, you know, routine is probably the short answer. <laughs> Um, you know, I do a lot of things that I've done for years that because uh, you mentioned, you know, physical, but, you know, let's not forget the mental health, <laughs> you know, aspect totally. of it, you know, the mental, being entrepreneur... emotional, mental, right. emotional, spiritual. Yeah. It's all it's all wrapped in together because uh, this thing that we do can be very stressful. <laughs> um, and then that leads to, you know, physical breakdown as well. So, you know, a long time ago, I I, I learned and I, I think I wrote a blog post, you know, probably 15, 20 years ago um, that I called the, uh, the math of exercise. Um, and a lot of people don't do it. Sometimes it's stress. And it's like, I just can't get myself there. But a lot of times we don't do it because we think, oh, I'm too busy, right? I don't have time to squeeze that in. And, and I learned a long time ago that, you know, the the 30 minutes of yoga and the 30 minutes of meditation that I do, you know, every morning, you know, buys me six hours uh, mm -hmm. you know, of, of productive time. And so, you know, those kind of rituals um, are something that, you know, I've, I've done for many, many years and, and hold, you know, pretty sacred to, you know, being, you know, the highest priority of the day. I love this. I want to keep going down this road with you because um, again, we talk about it all the time is if you're selfish with the first two hours of your day, mm -hmm. you can steward the other 22. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to break that down a little bit, the math of exercise um, of how that 30 minutes of meditation or breath work or whatever it is that you're doing buys you the extra six hours for the day. Can you explain that to the audience a little bit so that they can kind of get inside your head of what you're meaning and yeah. how, you, how you use that? So, you know, it without getting without needing to get um into what meditation is you know in a lot of ways what it really does is it quiets your mind it it actually trains you to be present i mean that's the whole point of it <laughs> um and i think that that is a skill that you know so that's why a lot of people call it a meditation practice i mean that is a mm. skill that we practice because we're going to need you know the second you flip open the you know, Gmail, you know, the stress level goes up, right? You start responding to things. You, you start making task lists of all the, you know, things that you think you need to do today. You start actually responding to, you know, everybody that's calling at you. Well, you know, without the ability to, to slow down mentally and to kind of go, oh, you know, this is actually what I'm working. This is the one thing that I actually need to get done today. Um, and, you know, I can let the other go. You know, I think that's in a lot of ways, um, I think for me, the hardest thing uh, to learn uh, in in business was was how to let go, uh, let go of the stuff that didn't really matter, let go of the stuff that I had no control over, but that I was you know obsessing over, um, and to really focus on, hey, if I get this one thing done, I'm actually going to move the needle, and you know, in a week from now, a month from now, that's going to make a difference. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I love that, and and the unique part about that is that. Um, it gives you an opportunity to 
create. It gives you an opportunity to really like, um, when you do quiet your mind, I, I go back to the biblical verse all the time is be still and know that I'm God, not be busy and know that I'm God. And so when you can still your mind and you can allow yourself to get into your deepest, most connected states, it's when your best ideas and when your most yeah. impact can actually, and, and the most difference making uh, can occur. So I, I absolutely love that. Well, and, and uh, if, if, go ahead. if you want to go really deep on that one, um, you know, the, the part that a lot of people miss is that they interpret that as a person speaking to them. Um, yes. And it is, I am God, you mm -hmm. are God. <laughs> and that's the part that, you know, that if you own that, um, you know, it will change some things. A hundred percent. That's so good. So good. It's uh, because uh, to be honest with you, God lives inside each and every one of us. And, <laughs> uh, and the moment that you become still, that's why uh, I, I know for me, my best ideas and it, and I hear people all the time who don't have a spiritual connection or all these things are like, I'll be in the bathtub or I'll be in the shower and I'll have my best idea or I'll be in the hot tub. And I'm just like, that's it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because you stilled your mind, you became centered on that calling that is God given. And, uh, and it's brilliant. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. John, as, as you kind of emulate so many things that, we talk about for somebody who lives in ownership, somebody who um, executes in ownership and is is just a high performing person has has yielded the fruit of of what that does. What would your definition of ownership be? I think that to me, um, there's an element of self reliance um, in in ownership, and not in the I can go it alone. You know, I own it, and I you know I do everything, and I get all the <laughs> all the credit, and I don't need help but more in in the sense of you know realizing how connected we are to everything um and to everyone and to every you know trees i i live here in colorado and i've lived basically in a forest um you know that that i think when you uh, get to the level where you realize how all those things are connected then you know you really start to show up um that to me is when success starts to happen um and not as somebody else defined it but 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 totally in 100% how you define it I love it. I love it. Ownership is self-reliance in deep connection. Yeah. Um, it's it's so beautifully said because it's it's true, is everything is so deeply interconnected. And um being able to be still enough, but aware enough to realize that is uh is, is the key and and the big difference maker when when you kind of pull everything back. John, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Um, if uh, if they want more information um, on what you do and how you do it, or if sure. they just want to listen to listen to more of you. Yeah. So pretty much for everything I've been doing for the last few decades, you can find it at uh, ducttapemarketing.com. That's D-U-C-T. T A P E marketing uh, dot com and I have written um, seven books uh, over you know my career and um, there's for your listeners um, I want to I mean six of them are about marketing <laughs> I wrote one uh, uh, basically as I call it a love letter to entrepreneurs and it's a daily reflection uh, guide called the self reliant entrepreneur um, and it's you know people are probably familiar with uh, you know, other daily kind of books, you pick it up and you read two minutes. I ask you a question to reflect on uh, every day. Um, and it, it really, you know, it was really, you know, it was very driven, you know, by my practice of kind of daily, um, you know, inspiration, but also it really just came about you know, I wanted to chronicle kind of my journey, the the self development path that I feel like I've gone down for mm -hmm. many uh, many decades. And uh, so, you know, I it's the work I'm actually the most proud of. <laughs> it it didn't sell the most, uh, but uh, you know, it's the one that I think for your audience uh, uh, probably makes some sense. I love it. I love it. We'll uh, we'll put a link for that down in the show notes as well, so uh, you guys can get access to that. The self reliant entrepreneur um, ultimately makes sense, knowing that. Ownership is self-reliance in deep connection. <laughs> and so uh, listeners, as you guys go forward, we know that health is wealth and time is the asset. And as we continue to move into that space, we have to determine where we're spending our time. Who are we investing it with? Why are we investing it there? And knowing that who we need to sell ourselves to, who we need to um, lean into to serve are people who 
want to invest in themselves. Be with a with people who are a rising tide. Be in that area and knowing that if we want to make a true impact and difference, that there are no instructions, there are no manuals to this. But we can't be just going after the puzzle pieces that are singular, just sitting out there. It needs to be a wholly, holistically integrated process. It needs to be the entire package together. And as we dive into that, we know that we can ultimately buy back our time. We can buy back anything that exists there so that we can come back to ourselves because we are self-reliant. We're self-reliant on the deep connection that only we can make. And that's what a life of ownership looks like. We know success is different. So own your different. And we'll see you guys next week. 